Now I'll continue with what uh, the Lord will put my heart to share with you. When I say the Lord will put my heart, it means two things. First, uh, He had told me to preach word that I know, I have experienced. Yeah. Uh, among the many things that I know, uh, uh, there are things like the Lord that assigned me to say regularly. I think every preacher does. All right. Yeah, in Bible school, we have uh, a study of hell, judgment. But uh, I'm not uh, directed by the Lord to emphasize those things. Uh, uh, if you want me to give you some notes, I have some notes on that. <laughs> but the Lord put my, upon my heart, also with my background, I've gone through extreme problems in life. They may not be as bad as some other people that you know, but from my side, I knew it. And the Lord took me out of my valley of shadow of death, out of my fear of going to hell. Yes, it saved me. I know. I know that I know. Yes. In a background that had nothing to do with uh, the, the gospel and the Lord saved me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I thank God. I thank God the way He led me to know Him. And I thank God He has uh, spoken to me from the scripture. And He wants me, when He calls me into ministry, He wants me to give scripture food. This is shepherding. Alright? Speaking from my heart, what that I experienced from Him. And they are living and active by two edged sword. Yes, it's a two-edged sword. He first ministered to me. He, he cuts away all my disappointment, curse, sickness, curses. And then you'll cut off all the bondages that you're suffering. Amen. Now, don't look at me as a lecturer at this moment. Uh, I can make mistakes with my language. Alright? Don't get angry with that. Uh, I say what the Holy Spirit put in my heart to say. I'll continue with this series to tell you that we are a spirit with a soul living in a body and therefore we have to learn the way to walk in the spirit, to live a supernatural life. Alright, not just our focus here, God is supernatural, is all the world supernatural. It's our mind is trained by the knowledge of this world especially the Western emphasis on the material uh, goodness of this world until you know, when we read the Bible, a lot of the time we read from the natural perspective and try to understand the supernatural things said in the Bible. Uh, we are walking by faith, not by sight. We are not judging things with our senses. What we see, what we hear, how we feel, how, how it tastes. We judge by what God say to our heart. Amen? That is a way to live as a spirit, soul, body person. Now, continue with this verse. First uh, Thessalonians, first, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 to verse 18. So it's put into three verses, but it is one statement. It's one talk. But there are a few major things said here. What caught my attention was the second part of this statement saying, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Yeah. So this is the will of God for all Christians, or for all who are born again. That the first half of three things. First is rejoicing always. Secondly is praying without ceasing. And thirdly in everything give thanks. And these three things, uh, since it's mentioned in just one clause, the first half of this statement, I believe they are inseparable. Uh, uh, among the three, I think the most emphasized is prayer, the middle one. But that's a middle step. All right. And the second most emphasized uh, uh, is uh, thanksgiving. Give thanks to everything. But I think. Uh, as Christian, 
uh, we need to learn to give thanks. We have been giving thanks in these three years of pandemic. Uh, it sounds crazy, but if you are healthy, you have lesser pressure on your life. Even if you give thanks, you still face all this pressure of the pandemic. The pandemic has caused massive problems in the world. All right. Yeah. And some uh, nation, industrial nation, big nations in the world. Well, you can counter check this fact. I am only a reader of news. I'm not so sure. Please do not take it as no. What I say is infallible. Uh, I am not the economist. So this is what I heard a few months ago. Uh, I already heard news saying that you know in Germany, forty thousand. Either factories or business close, close down. And just last two weeks, and I see the latest figure is the double, eighty thousand. Yeah, do you know how many thousand factories in the whole Malaysia? It's many, many, many. Long, long ago, I have uh, read about that number. I was shocked. All right. So I, I, I am quite uh, ignorant of this, but the number shocked. Okay. Now I say this because I'm now talking about praying always and give thanks. Praying always, if it is a, a popular practice among Christians, fine. But sometimes our prayer can be very different from what God wants us to pray. Yeah. And then Thanksgiving is part of prayer. Not all Christians have learned it. Not all Christians have learned it and do it. But it's inseparable. But the first part, rejoice always. If you do a Bible study, you realize that this rejoicing always that Paul was uh, entrusted by the Holy Spirit to, to teach. It is not just uh, in the natural, you, know, you put on a positive emotion, a positive mindset, more, more than that, far more than that. Because in Philippians chapter 4, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Scripture explains scripture. This is a good Bible study technique. You do a Bible study. Now with the electronic Bible, it's not difficult. It's much, much easier than those say. Uh, we've got to use concordance. Uh, so rejoicing always, I already shared in the past two sessions, first uh, in the, the, the fourth session of this series. Yeah, the supernatural joy of the Lord. It's from heaven, it's for everybody. Open up our heart, we worship until we are flowing with the melody, with that sense of musical from heaven in our heart. We can even sing a song of talking how good God is. That's what some Him uh, is in your heart, you sing to God a song that he is good to you. It's how great He is to you. Or sometimes we can just sing uh, or hum the tune with, a, with a, some sound that we do not know. Now you were singing in time, you were singing in the spirit. That can be a language. That in some nation, I believe it's a language. In some nation, people speak. Well, in some nation uh, like uh, India, there are more than 10,000 types of languages and dialect, dialect, dialects. Uh, uh, I heard in Papua New Guinea, we know very little about them. It happened that I'm going to send some of their pastors to my training program. Yeah, then I realized that you know their population is not big. The place is very, uh, I should say, undeveloped, not so modernized like ours. Getting more, uh, especially in Port Harcourt, yeah. Is it Harcourt? Or Port? I can't remember. Uh, I have the word Port, but. And yeah, in uh, Port Harcourt, in Africa. It's another. Huh? Port Port New Guinea. And, uh, and uh, it is quite modernized, you know? it is uh, progressing very fast. Now, these, these, these people have uh, some hundreds of dialects. 
Yeah, I think it could be more than a thousand. So when you free from the Spirit of God, will give you uh, a sense of uh, rhythm and tune, and uh, you just let it come up from you in a language that you do not know they're singing in the Spirit, singing in that. But to God, that He is a high praise. That's from your heart. You receive it. You can feel it. It's so nice. Yeah, God is a God of grace. When your spirit, uh, when you control your spirit, you open up your spirit, then all the works of the flesh, your old nature stops functioning. Like jealousy, fear, hatred, bitterness. It's just like when you pray in time, yeah, when deep in the spirit pray in time, you are, you are dreaming from the Lord, uh, His love, His power. And then when you uh, pray in time, all your trouble, sin, imperfection stops bothering you. That, that is the time you are moving in the spirit. And the nature of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, these are called the fruit of the Holy Spirit, not your fruit, it's His, but it overpower your spirit. Amen. You keep doing it, you will see your character change. In any area you say, no, no, I don't want you to change, God is not going to fight with you. He's a gentleman, he's a gentle spirit. So that is called living in the spirit, or walking in the Spirit, or being led by the Spirit. Now, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, you must be willing to be led by the Spirit. It's the same thing. All right. Yeah, God actually wants you, in everything that you do, you are conscious of your spirit, soul, in a body, and your spirit has become one spirit with the three in one God. It's no longer who you live, but Christ lives in you. Because you have Christ lives in you, Father God has made His residence in you. And the Holy Spirit has come into you when He baptizes you. Alright? The word uh, uh, baptize actually means soak. Be baptized means be soaked. Means you are willing, you know, uh, for the Holy Spirit to overcome you. Yeah, it's not a one time, uh, like water baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a lifetime practice. After the first time you feel with the Holy Spirit, somebody's help, praying for you, you speak in time, you don't stop there. There's not, uh, you see, there's water baptism, sir, by tradition, churches ease you, but no one will ease you uh, uh, a sir of baptism in the Holy Spirit because that is not the end. Yeah, Ephesians 5 18 says that there should be a continuous practice. So in everything that you do, in your work, in your family life, relationship, communication, you deliberately set your mind on the Holy Spirit. So this scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, Paul wrote this to the church at Thessalonica to say, but it's meant for the whole body of Christ, meant for you. So this is our prayer life. Prayer life is not, you know, your interest. The tradition of thinking some people are, are prayerless and oh, a few of us are more prayerful and we feel a kind of uh, a spiritual maturity than them. I tell you, they a very subtle self-righteousness. Yes. Don't take it that way. This is supposed to be the way of living our Christian life practicing our new life. You rejoice always by free food in the Spirit until you, the gift, uh, uh, sorry, the fruit of joy of the Holy Spirit from heaven fills you. Yeah. Yeah, it fills you. Even if you were going great trouble at that moment, you are just lost uh, the fear. You have the joy. Yeah, when, when joy fills us, there is the laughter. We will laugh. Alright, at uh, one time it's called the holy laughter. Yeah, holy because from heaven. It sets you free from all kinds of uh, sadness. Sadness will flee away when that uh, heavenly joy came upon 
Israel, those days when they returned from their 70 years of very cruel slavery in the ancient Babylon. For three generations, they didn't live in joy. I think they, can, they could hardly have a joke. They could hardly write a song. If they, if some of those talented would write a song, it would be a song of hurt, a song of bitterness, like many pop songs today. Yeah. If people can love uh, can write a love song about a uh, man, women, or boy, girl emotion, they have some joy in their heart in, a, in, a, in one area. But a lot of these love songs uh, are talking about you know, being children, unwanted, right? Yeah. So, so I, I want to tell you that this joy from heaven is real. In this threefold uh, revelation about prayer, first we should set our mind on the Holy Spirit until we have the joy of the Lord through our heart. Then we can hear the Lord, then we pray. Spirit-led prayer. If you do that, then you will have thanksgiving. You have things to give thanks. God. Alright? Now this praying without ceasing is a practice, it's a continuous, it's a journey. Yeah, it is like Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 of the Old Testament say, you, you leave it, you leave as a practice of trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Not that your own understanding is not good. You may be a person of very high IQ, my boss IQ is higher than yours. Even in your best uh, idea, they make you very rich and powerful and influential people believe in what you say and they follow you. God's thought is still higher. And in a negative sense, when you somehow make a big mistake, yeah, God's view is always higher. God is viewing that situation of training you. He can take you out of your valley of shadow of death. And you'll become uh, even wiser, more beneficial to yourself, and also benefiting others. Yeah. So lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Now, God directs your path uh, is after the instruction of you've got to seek Him, you've got to let, uh, let Him lead your way. Yeah, you've got to acknowledge Him. Jesus said the same. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And then God will open up new doors, direct your way. Amen. So prayer is not for the desperate. If you pray, you know that, you know, you're always desperate because you're desperate not because you're involved. You're desperate for His higher way, better way. Yes. Sick person, sick 24 hours daily. But you are going to really enjoy seeing God is so real in your life. God is so real around you. Ah, now this praying without ceasing uh, also means, you know, uh, in, in you are wholeheartedly uh, seeking God for, for answering your prayer, helping you. The word supplication is serious prayer. Serious prayer. And in Jesus' teaching, you know that He rebuked the Pharisees, the professional spiritual leaders in Israel. Yeah, He rebuked them. You are an actor, you know, from you are only acting out in your prayer, but your heart is distant from Him. Yeah, and today there are many Christians can do that. Uh, Many Christian leaders can do that. This is a common uh, problem uh, in the body of Christ. We can do things to show. But God is not seeing the outside, God is seeing your heart. Yes. I don't mean to lift up myself when I say things I'm saying the truth. Now, how do I know that people say to me a truth is it disturbs? My conscience, it disturbs my feeling. 
If, if you are very used to people saying to you, good statement, but the same person who used to say good statement to you, somehow say a truth, you feel for a moment uh, unnatural. And we can even quickly respond by saying, you see, not courteous, don't know how to say, don't know how to speak. But actually, we are gonna keep, you know, uh, do I, you know, with a certain truth. This is how, you know, when, 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 when God do something, a uh, breakthrough in our life, oh, we're happy, we dance, we really sing. But what if God corrects you? Uh, he speaks to your inner weakness, He will correct you. But just that we don't see punishment of God coming so quickly. Yes, God is slow to punish. He's quick to forgive. The Bible is saying, if it is not in that way, no one will survive. Because the wrath of God is also very real. But do not fall into the mistake of keep on wanting to hear favorite verses from the Bible, favorite preaching. You know where's my favorite preaching? My favorite uh, uh, messages I, I want to hear? When that pleases me. Yeah, but God is not a man pleaser, the Bible says. He is no man pleaser. He does please you because you are His child. But there are times He is just very truthful to you. He's a spirit of truth. He can disrupt your inner weakness. But He's speaking to you. Yeah, parents, grandparents, train up your children and your grandchildren uh, to listen to the conscience, to listen to God in their heart. Don't always you know, hear tradition, hear what people generally say. Hear the Lord in your heart. Teach them that way. Yes. In the 1980s, I noticed there's a lot of media influence of, uh, of, of, uh, of this my way. I, I want to see this way. When people say the truth, they don't like it. They want to rewrite it in a way that favors their feeling. Well, good thing, you know, many of this kind of cartoon are no longer allowed or is out of fashion. You know, in this uh, worldwide problem at the moment, I think people, uh, God is confronting people, you've got to face the truth. You've got to face the reality. Yes. Even though when, when God says something to you directly, you have a way to explain it, it will become uh, your way of responding to people. If God calls people to say something to your heart, you just say, well, that is your way, I have my way. Now, I think that could become your personal problem. Yeah, that means you are not teachable before God and before man. Yeah, so this uh, sixth message in the series, Living a Spirit, Soul, uh, Body, Person, uh, is, it, is a, it is a way of living. Uh, today, uh, I want to say it this way, since we have a pandemic, now, if you want to, in such a worldwide bad time, live by trusting the Lord, you need to come to the Lord with your open heart, be led by the Spirit. Set your mind on the Spirit. Set your mind on the Word of God, even though you don't quite like the Bible, put it that way. Yes. Uh, in my point A, this is what I believe. Breaking through into a glorious journey with Father God. Uh, I have I, I just briefly uh, explained 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. In the last two sessions, I talked about how we can tap into the joy of the Lord. And then, prayer. This prayer is a way of life in everything. You talk, consult God first. Solomon had a uh, that revelation. He told us in everything. Do not rely on your own understanding. Rewrite the Bible in your own paraphrase. Yeah. Or when the Holy Spirit himself or he through somebody has said something to your heart, you refuse to accept, you say, I have my way. 
Uh, I remember in my teenage time there was a pop song called, uh, called I Do It My Way. Yeah, I believe uh, in your teenage time because I've gone through that, there's a time we suddenly realize we're seeing different from our parents, from the tradition, you know, which are God increasingly pouring out new ways to the whole world. But sometimes we can take that as an excuse for our disobedience, for our unteachability. Okay, now good. With that, uh, uh, explaining about our way of prayer, there are threefold. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. And then in everything, you will see God takes over. God doesn't force you. You've got to be led by Him, seek His way, let Him speak, and then you will have a thanksgiving. Uh, so, Today, I want to emphasize on in our current situation with a worldwide crisis and uh, how do we pray without ceasing. Yeah, my uh, first statement here under point A, his intervention in a crisis becomes a starting point of leading you on a glorious journey with good success. That's what uh, this verse in the Old Testament, Joseph 1a, and become a popular verse. Yeah. When you keep your heart to meditate on the word of God, God will lead you into good success. God doesn't lead us into trouble. It's the devil that attack us that put us into trouble. Don't have to be happy if you see a fellow Christian suffer. Even he or, or she doesn't know why she is, she is suffering that way. Now that is an attack. Attack of the devil. Paul wanted to go to Rome, the capital city of the Roman Empire those days. For many years, now in his writing, he said, he said, I want to come to you for many years. But Satan hit them. Yeah. All the persecutions that the apostles have suffered not because of their wrong. Simply because the devil doesn't want a good happening to continue. Yeah, I'm sure every Christian, uh, yeah, if you ask and they are honestly, you know, answering you, they can definitely admit that in their life as they walk uh, with the Lord, they are being attacked by the devil. Yes, we don't, don't need to be devil conscious. Don't need to be conscious that, oh, in that case, I'm not going to walk with the Lord. In that case, I'm not going to take a big step of faith. I'll be attacked. No, you don't, uh, don't get put, in, put on the kind of mindset. That is, a, that is what the devil wants you to live in there. You keep believing in all the great promises of God. It's your future. It's your glorious future. But when you start to believe in it, uh, you can uh, be attacked. Yes, but don't fear. Because you are born again to be more than conquerors. More than a winner. Yeah, conquerors need to fight and win. But then the Bible says, you know, the war belongs to the Lord, the victory is yours. That's why we are more than conquerors. But you need to yield uh, to the Lord. When you are facing a problem, you yield to the Lord, and the Lord will fight for you. Amen? And you will win. You will conquer effortlessly. Uh, now, uh, one uh, testimony from the Old Testament, Abraham is our uh, it, it is life uh, following the Lord. Uh, it is our uh, example, a model to learn from. Okay, uh, of uh, this truth that is uh, said in First Thessalonians five sixteen to eighteen. Now God gave Abraham a breakthrough from his family crisis and embarked him on a journey of inheriting the promised land. Yeah, if you refer to Acts chapter 7 and then Genesis 12, this scripture uh, in, in, uh, in this whole paragraph I've written, then you will realize that when he was in ancient Babylon and a place called Ur, uh, the, begin the, the ending of this river, Euphrates and uh, Tigris and Tigris and Euphrates, yes. Uh, it was a great center 
uh, business center in the ancient world. But something happened to the family. The Bible didn't go into detail. So the father said, let's move. Get out of this place. That was the time God came into Abraham's life. He got a glory encounter with Father God. And Father God told him, you and your wife leave. That means to bring along uh, the nephew uh, or the father. But somehow, that was his uh, very first encounter. And uh, he was learning to follow God directly. I mean, 100%. Now all of us are learning to follow God. If you want God to entrust you, revelation, prophecy that will direct you, you've got to learn it this way, you've got to make God your best friend uh, until there are emotion, uh, there are extreme joy that He is the only person can hear from you. The extreme secret uh, and advanced guidance of the Lord he would want you to tell others, he tell me, yes. Uh, for people who, who, who are very easy, whatever comes to their mind, their heart, they just say to anybody, this is a difficult lesson. All right? Now, Abraham had a glory encounter while the family was in a crisis. What was the family crisis? Genesis 11. Verse 27, 28, and 31 specifically said that it was at the time his second younger brother died. Uh, that brother is called Haran. Haran was a popular name. All right, He died before his father, Terah. Yeah, anything happened like that, I tell you, it is a, it's a big... Uh, <laughs> In the family. Yeah, Ur has another name called Mesopotamia. Now, that was the time the God of glory appeared to Abraham, calling him to leave his homeland and his father's house. It was a crisis, but it became a beginning of a great mission, great calling. Yeah, that was the time God put into Abraham. A, div a divine mission of becoming a spiritual father to bless nations. This is not a call for any Christian. Yeah, you, you have an apostolic call. You know, that call is part of Abraham's mission. God, God has called Abraham to become a pioneer father of a mission of taking the whole world. When we read the Bible, it speaks similar thing to our heart. We still got to first of all respect that call, that specific, uh, that that revelation specifically first of all for who it was for the for, for Abraham. But you got to do a Bible study and realizing that when we believe in Jesus, Jesus is the last descendant, final descendant of Abraham. All right. So, we are born again in Christ into this blessing of Abraham. Sharing the same mission. Just like our spiritual gift, it's just a portion of Christ's gift. We are sharing Christ's gift. That's why we have the anointing of the Holy One. It doesn't mean that you have the entire anointing of the Holy One. You have a portion. So do Bible study properly, please. All right, so this is a powerful testimony. Read uh, those chapters about Abraham. You will see, you know, he had gone through quite a few times of learning to flow with the calling. Yeah, it took him some 20 over years to fully realize. It. Yes, he, he, he eventually got a son at an age that no man could be a father. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Yeah. So, this is the truth. We rejoice always when we face a crisis. We don't just uh, uh, 
have ourselves drowned in the problem of the crisis. Rather, go into soaking the spirit, worship, until there is an atmospheric change flowing from your heart. Our last session, I shared with you that's how Jesus, uh, when he operated uh, this uh, resurrection for that girl who was dead, funeral already on by tradition, he stopped the funeral because the, the funeral those days were just to add more sorrow to the atmosphere. You can't have a breakthrough in the kind of atmosphere to come out of the kind of environment. All of us carry an environment. Our mind, what is in our mind, our heart, flows out around us like rivers. Yes, sometimes we've got a lot of bitterness flowing out from us, not rivers of living water, but rivers of bitterness and division. All right? So, you got to really, you know, uh, come out of your sadness, come out of your negative feeling, set your mind on the Holy Spirit until you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you know it, you feel it, you know that you know love, joy, peace flowing out of you. You are rejoicing in the Lord. Now keep on rejoicing, don't stop because it's not just a moment you feel the joy, you think there is a, a breakthrough. Rejoice for another half an hour if you can, or at least another few minutes. Once you open up more for the Holy Spirit to feel you, to feel you, you will stop to enjoy. You can, uh, that's good, that is how the, uh, the Bible uses the word drinking. Uh, so when you follow the Holy Spirit without any reservation, His love is better than wine. It can make you spiritually drunk like this lady on the floor. And just now, a few more. Yes, God can give your spirit this kind of feeling and it is good because after that you will know that a lot of the fear that you had in the previous week are gone miraculously supernaturally cut off and there's a new joy in you you're going back to the same uh, work doing the same thing tomorrow but you just don't fear the same challenge your courage your faith added to you. So half an hour, an hour like this, you've got an impartation. He plan your time. All of us are, God is very fair, all of us will need 24 hours a day. Plan your time. Not, not the more you work, the more you have success. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, then you will have good days. Yeah. You yield to the Lord, then you have good success. Every day have a precious time of drinking from the Holy Spirit. Every day have a time of soaking. Don't, don't, don't accept the kind of suggestion that, you know, for those who soak like this, only certain Christians that have this kind of peculiar experience. Everyone can go into this kind of holy experience. It's not peculiar. Yeah. Everything from heaven as people from the world so used to the way of the devil, the way of man, or well, is peculiar. There's nothing peculiar. King David in the Old Testament, when he received the Ark of the Covenant uh, uh, to where uh, it should be, just a journey. He was uh, dancing in the spirit. Uh, so it was peculiar. One of his wife couldn't accept it. So you don't go with what is popular. You go with what the Bible says. You walk in the spirit. You walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, now, uh, uh, having uh, brought your heart, your understanding, your faith, but you see how Abraham uh, in a crisis but God appeared in His glory and God took him into a new journey, much higher journey than he ever thought of in his life. He became the father of faith, father of knowing God, of all nations. And today, we have become His children, spiritual children, children by faith. Amen. Okay, now I want to quickly lead you to 
uh, connect with what Jesus has taught us. Luke 11, verse 9 to 10, uh, uh, quoted from the New Living Translation. Because a New Living Translation brings out the, the, the grandma, grammatical implication of the Greek. And, I, and so I tell you, keep on asking. I know in the English is ask. There's a correct uh, translation, but the Greek word, which is translate, uh, is correctly translated as such one word ask, in the Greek grammar, it means you keep on doing it, keep on asking. Not at one time you keep on uh, nagging God, no, but rather make it your lifetime practice of asking God. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you for everyone to ask, receive. There is a heart of God. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't want you to waste your time. Ask and don't have. Ask and you will have. Seek and you will find. Knock and the opportunity will be there, will be opened up. Yeah. But you know, you know uh, uh, we can uh, make uh, we can uh, make our version of this teaching. Some people will say that I ask, you know, I just believe God will go ahead of me and do everything. I don't need to knock. It's not always true. It's certain time in your life that you didn't ask, and God appeared and save you out of trouble or bless you beyond you de uh, deserve. That is an extraordinary. All right. Regularly, you practice what Jesus said: ask, seek, and knock. You ask. When there is a little hint, a little news, you seek. Move ahead. You may have to uh, respond to a, a job appointment. Yes, you got to knock. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus wants us to keep on asking, seeking, knocking because God opens the door to raise you to a higher or a larger territory. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. I, I love this scripture because it spoke to me. This man mentioned only one time in the Old Testament uh, by tracing a chronology. We, we know he belongs to Israel. Uh, to a certain tribe and then we don't know any other thing uh, the first time i heard of this was in my first year in bible school that was 40 over years ago this preacher say that you know uh, the early part of this uh, uh, first chronicles is like uh graveyard you have uh, name after name after name uh, or this, that this person is a son of who? Uh, so it's like Tom Stone, uh, just see the name, what went by, went like it. But suddenly there's a bigger Tom Stone, it was this one. Yeah, this person's called J-Bax. And uh, literally this word J-Bax means, you know, he caused me trouble, or give me pain, or I'm in pain, something like that. But, he is from Israel. He heard of there was a man called Jacob. All right. Uh, the verses before, after, I uh, important and go back. Again. So he, he cried out to the God of Israel. This Israel is a new name of Jacob. Jacob, he got a bad name. Yeah, supplanter. Jabez is a bad name. He said, I'm like one of my ancestors. I don't like this name. Maybe it took some years uh, for him uh, to be ridiculed. Uh, people have ridiculed him, mocked at him. Wow, what a funny name. And he realized that I don't want this in my life anymore. I want to change. God changed Jacob to Israel. Israel means we're ruling with God. Yeah, today when we are born again, we are Jesus in us, we are ruling with Jesus. We are seated together with Jesus to rule. You use Jesus' name, you invoke your birthright, invoke your authority against any problem, anything that restricted you. It's your right to break through. 
You don't need to cry out. You don't need to go to fasting for a breakthrough. You just use your right. Invoke your birthright. Of course, a lot of our invoking of birthright turned out to be our conversation with God. So as Jabez, he said to God, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. He realized that God does not curse his people. You'll bless me indeed. I acknowledge it. I believe it now. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. You'll give me a smooth journey, a good success. Yeah, I'm in a very small vision. I live, I'm living a very small life. Yeah, no, no one consult me. I'm in pain. But Lord, enlarge my vision, my territory. Enlarge my blessing on people. Yeah, pour on me an overflowing blessing until I'm more than enough for any situation. 2 Corinthians 9 8. Uh, and then your hand would be with me. You are the one, huh? the word of God, of my ancestors say, as a benediction after the tabernacle meeting, the Lord bless you and keep you. So you bless me and keep me, protect me from all attack. Jesus in the Lord's prayer also had prayed. Yeah, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. Yeah, Jesus will promise you the world has big trouble, but in me you have peace. Don't try to prophesy it's not against what God has allowed in the whole world because it's waking up the whole world to know Him, to cry out to Him. Rather pray that, Lord, through this uh, pandemic, through this uh, massive problem in the world, you cause every heart to cry out to you. Amen. You are not God. Please do not think that your, your fasting, your prayer, your crown to God, your tears make you like God. You don't need to. You are made in His likeness. You are no God. Only He is the I Am, who I am. So pray correctly, flow with His heart. That your hand will be with me and you will keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. I, cause, I may not cause pain. I, you see, our hurt, our restriction always flowing out from us. So Jabez realized that, you know, he suffered a disadvantage. That's why he remained small, nobody came to him because uh, the hurt in him was so much boom when he said he hurt. <laughs> Until people distant from him. Yeah. Now, don't mix up with people. Some people, they are born uh, not so sociable, not, not uh, that natural, always want to go out and eat, travel. Uh, they're not that they have pain. I tell you, you may be smiling, you may be very, very friendly, you got a lot of pain and bitterness. Don't try to uh, mismatch realities in life. So, Jabez had a bad name. He had come to realize it. He got an ancestor, got a bad name, but God changed his name, and he became uh, oh, one of the very crucial person in that mission God has given to Father Abraham. Yeah, he got 12 sons to become. That means uh, Jacob became an Israel and he is a pioneer father of 12 tribes in Israel. Now don't debate about how he got so many uh, uh, sons or those. I leave it to God. God permitted that. Yes, God has general grace for everyone, but for you, for every one of you in your situation, in your limitation, in your difficulty, God has some very unusual way, specifically for you. God is a God of grace. He can give concession. All right? I'm not talking about breaking the law. I'm talking about God favors you, particularly you will find that God bless you in a certain way that He didn't bless other Christians, but you don't impose it on others. Alright, that's for you. Yes. So that you don't need to be jealous of others who are blessed in a different way. You don't need to fear others who are more blessed than you. In your way, God has some doors that He would open for others. In your situation, God has some way to console you. 
you are somebody to even tolerate uh, your lack of wisdom or what he has. You read the whole Bible, you will know that I'm not misholding the Bible. Uh, the unique way God has for Jacob uh, and change his name to Israel is not for you, it's for him. If, uh, if, if similarly it happened to you, just thank God and don't uh, criticize other Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. So, he, he, he prayed to God. Thank God, enlarge my territory. You protect me. You lead me. And, and so that I will not cause pain to others. You know, when joy fills your heart, it would hurt others. When the night fruit of the Holy Spirit, because you always soak in the Lord until you know you have uh, these fruits in your life as your new godly character, it will only bless people. Okay, third point. Yeah. God can, God always uh, answer your prayer. I preached to you before that from the Bible I see this. You will see this in the Bible. When God answer your prayer, uh, He give what you ask. He, he will not uh, give uh, to, to people, ask for an egg, uh, give you a stone. No. Ask for a fish, you will not give up a scorpion. Jesus has said it. You will get what you ask. And following uh, the whole Bible, God gives you timely. Yes. Yeah, and don't put it this way. Uh, God always give up at the last moment. I think it's the old fashioned of preaching. God will give you time. God will give only good things. He give good things to those who love Him. He give good things to those He loves you, uh, who He loves. He give good things when you ask the Bible said. So He give timely good things. He doesn't give bad things. Yeah. And He gives far more than you can ask and take the Bible says. Now, what He gives you far more than you think may not be exactly, you know, in the, uh, more than you, you think. What he gives, the best thing he gives, sometimes can contradict uh, what you see as good. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, when God gives you a breakthrough, it's not just a one-time experience. He wants you to have a new journey. That's why, we pray and keep on praying. We ask and keep on asking. Amen. Yeah. That's why we pray consistent prayer, persistent prayer. Now, point B, I want to show you our Lord Jesus. He prayed always as an example, the best example. Um, in my course book, I got more. Uh, evidences, but in this short session, I'll just have eight, eight points here. Firstly, at the beginning of his ministry, when Jesus ordered a water baptism, he doesn't need the water baptism in more than to show us. Baptism is, I can say, a command of Jesus. So when you go and uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in my name. He say that to us. Alright. I know that water doesn't say it's symbolical, but it's not symbolical for everybody. It's symbolical for people who have accepted that the blood of Jesus has cleansed them from all sins. Okay? It's a ritual that Jesus had instituted for the church. We practice it. If you are not water baptized, tell me I'm going to make an arrangement for you. Now encourage all your children, grandchildren, to be water baptized. Now tell the church all oh, we can make an arrangement for them. Yeah. Now in that water baptism, when when you receive a water baptism, what do you do? You just let people perform on you. Oh, hallelujah. So Jesus was praying when he was in the water baptism, 
And that prayer was powerful. Heaven was open. And I believe you know, heaven is not shut over you. But this one became a glory encounter. The people around him saw it and recorded in the Bible. Second point, having risen a long while before daylight now at the beginning of his ministry. This is how the disciples are watching. And it's recorded in uh, Mark 135. He woke up earlier than anybody. And what did he do? Go and look for breakfast. Like uh, for the past 10 months, I didn't eat that breakfast. Now that's how happy. But Jesus didn't look for his breakfast. Or look for that kind of food in that part of PJ. But only that nasi lemak is good. Only that beef noodle is good. He did. Alright, now what did he do? Uh, he went to a solitary place. A place that is not disturbed. He wouldn't be disturbed by anybody. Yeah, though he was a beginning of ministry, he had signs and wonders miracle. Because he went to the poorest place of Israel, those things. Uh, Capernaum, a Galilee, where the fishermen would depend their livelihood on the lake of Galilee. They stay around there. There's not a place of famous people, rich people. Famous and rich people that were, uh, they were near to Jerusalem or Caesarea. Yeah, people wanted healing because they could not afford medication. They could not afford consulting even a traditional doctor. There are still many of such people in our nation when they are sick and they cannot afford doctor. When you pray for them, miracle will happen because their heart is crying out. They do not cry out to who, but you know who is God. You bless them, they will be healed with a miracle. Amen. Yes, there are many people in Malaysia, they have no medical insurance. Yes. And many of them, when they grow old, they have no idea where their children have money to put them into an old folks home. That's why they are healthy. They trust only God. So sometimes God don't allow us to have uh, plenty of money because He is just telling you, trust me, son, trust me, daughter. Yeah, I'm not mocking anybody. Uh. This is very true. Okay? You went to a place that nobody said, Jesus, heal me! Son of David, heal me! There he prayed. So, unceasing prayer, this is the example. Now, he is not uh, like some people say, no, then I will live in a solitary a whole life and pray and nobody come to me. Now, that is an excuse of a, a certain problem in mind. We are all called to come up, to, to draw near to God, away from uh, our usual. We are also called to go to the world and make disciples of all nations. There's always a two-way traffic. Come to the Lord. Give him all your heavy burdens. And after that, you go out and bless people. Testify, share the gospel. I know there is a culture saying that share your experience. Yeah. But they have become a, a substitution of sharing the gospel. Jesus didn't say share your experience, he said preach the gospel. <laughs> Uh, I'll preach the gospel without telling any testimony. Just telling what the Bible say. If I take, you know, when I say testimony, uh, I always share testimony from the Bible because I share my personal one. Uh, they tend to be, they tend to be people who trust that they would want. So the what I share is spiritual food. I'm a shepherd. I'm a pastor. You follow the Bible, you realize that. Uh, when God used the word shepherd for, for the people he called to shepherd people, 
with their pasta to his sheep. And a shepherd's main job is to lead the sheep to the green pasture, the food. And the Bible says there's only one type of spiritual food, the word in the Bible. Amen. I can I can preach theoretically because I know the Bible rather well gone through Bible school training and later on even upgraded Bible study. But I know that you will not change your life. If I say the scripture that God has changed my life, it is going to change you. But it is going to trouble you first. When you accept, you see yourself change. Ah, yes. There are quite a number of things uh, when uh, the Lord the uh, uh, hate and the stubbornness of my heart, uh, believe me, when I started to preach, uh, there is always reaction. Uh, people came to me, say right to my face, like, well, that is not a miracle. Obviously, the person is healed, but there will be people who don't like it to say that is not a miracle. Crazy. And the word is so crazy. Since uh, Adam and, and, and Eve you to the devil, the world has become crazy and more crazy. Yes. Immediately after that, uh, Eve and Adam, they find fault with one another. Their first two sons, uh, one killed the other. And then uh, they will be, they, they became, uh, there was more and more sins and violence in the world. And it will go on until the end of the age. Alright? So don't, don't need to fear that if you say something honestly that you have experienced from God, you have, you have experienced it as what the Word of God say, you must not fear persecution. Say, if there is persecutor, let's say out of 10, if there is one persecutor, nine of them are blessed. Nine of them have received spiritual food. And they become stronger in their spiritual, uh, in their spiritual doing, like healing, uh, overcoming, trusting the Lord, ministering. Yeah. Okay. So, when he became famous, what happened? More and more people came to him for healing, deliverance. And the Bible says he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. The more popular he became, the more he went into the uh, uh, wilderness, solitary place and pray. Fourth point, he, before he appointed the 12 apostles, what, what the Bible say? Luke 6, 12 and 13, he went into the mountain, went out to the mountain, the solitary place to pray and continue all night in that prayer to God, but talking with God. Now, please, please do not think that only some people have that. I tell you the secret is very simple. If you have done soaking to this extent, you're very open to the Lord. Yeah, in your soaking, you may be praying. Your mind is fully alert, talking, talking with God. So free flow, so easy. Keep talking, keep talking. But if you have reached there, you realize that by the time you are aware, to look at your time, a few hours have gone. But God enjoyed that kind of fellowship. That's called communion in the spirit. There's more fellowship in the spirit. We use a lot of biblical words for our convenience. Uh, when people eat together, that's called fellowshipping. You check the word fellowship because it doesn't involve eating. It's a spiritual fellowship. I'm not saying that then Christian we don't eat together. That's up to you. That non Christian also eat together. You don't need a special anointing to do that. That's why you're together. Alright? Now then point five, when there was a crisis, John the Baptist was in prison. You know what happened? Usually people would say, oh, I'm saying so, they ready all the people to share the earth, talk. Jesus did not do that. He did not succumb under the situation. What he did was, he rather departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. When you are hit with a crisis, confronted with a terrible situation, the best is go and talk to God. In deep soaking, you realize that God has permitted that for, permitted that for a breakthrough, for a better reason, for a better purpose. 
Amen. God may even tell you how to overcome it in the shortest time, in the best way. So after that, what did he do? He didn't take a break. I said that, or oh, I need a, uh, I need to uh, uh, ask for an annual leave. No, he went on to Galilee and preached the gospel of the kingdom. Recruited Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Taught in the synagogue at Capernaum. Healed many from sicknesses. Cast out demons from many people. Look, that is how Jesus uh, overcome a crisis. Yeah. John the Baptist was related to him, right? In Joseph family. A relative, you know, uh, preaching the gospel, saying that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, but he was arrested and put into the uh, police lockup. In fact, he was executed later. Not in a proper execution, just that the jealous queen, uh, I don't know if they uh, could be a jealous queen, yeah. So when the king uh, asked the daughter, oh, what do you want? And the mother has already uh, told her, when your father in that banquet asks what you want, you will ask for the gate of John the Baptist. That's how John the Baptist died. But Jesus, I'm sure in his heart, it was very painful. He did express it to God, I guess. It's just like in the Old Testament, David, when he came back from a, from, from a, a war with the enemies and realized that the enemy had come from the back and taken away all their women and children. He did not cry. Even the people went with him were so disappointed we wanted to kill him. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. When nobody encourages you, you encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Build it as a church culture, all right? That you will have, you'll become an army of encouraging yourself in the Lord. Amen. Come out from the culture of always saying, okay, my shoulder is ready. Uh, you know, my shoulder sheds some tears. You are not training soldiers. Can I say it from my heart because that's the way I train people. In my apostolic program, I got many people that line up their problem. They wanted to tell me. I say, why you tell me? Huh? Well, a pastor training pastor is easier. I told them, you read of you know uh, how I got this victory, that victory. It's simply because the Lord taught me, complain to Him, tell Him, pray to Him, encourage yourself in Him, rejoice in the Lord. Always, mark the word always. When you feel now you're so alone, nobody wants you anymore. Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Ah, so Boyfriend is powerful. He went on with his mission, he appointed all apostles, went to uh, other places. Point six. Jesus ordered to the twelve for praying alone. He, he has been praying alone, you know, talking to God. Uh, when it's time to pray alone, we also have prayed with the disciples openly. But he wanted the disciples to learn this way of very deep fellowship, communion uh, with Father God. And I want you to take note of this uh, clause uh, in Mark 6, 30 to 31 especially when they did not even have time to eat. Now, as the disciple of Jesus like that, well, Jesus trained people on the job. When I go and cast out demon coming in, do you think that Jesus would say, okay, everybody tried to cast out demon, he didn't give back. Our people came to me, I wanted uh, just uh, more speaking engagement, or have a little conference, I speak and must give them some session. I tell you at the very beginning, I make this bad mistake, I gave. But then the Lord corrected me. Jesus said, you do a Bible study, see, was that the way I treat disciples? No, they just fall. Participate in, 
in Jesus' ministry, those that, that was like this. Only when he paired up his disciples two by two and go. And they go. And they came back with a report that, oh, even Satan are uh, subjected to their invoking uh, uh, of their authority. And then Jesus was in holy laughter. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, when he was multiplying food, he broke the fish and passed the disciple, do it likewise, they broke it. Oh, it became a hilarious uh, participation. Okay. So, he, he, he was uh, showing them when we are so busy until we have no time to eat, don't just flow with the popularity. People say, no, 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 don't end the meeting with one more miracle. Sorry. And Jesus will just uh, disappear and you went into the wilderness, right? There was one time he did that and people anticipated he, he would go to the other side of Lake of Galilee. They went there earlier. And Jesus came walking on the water, remember that? <laughs> uh, so Jesus wanted the disciple uh, to, to practice having communion with Father God. No matter how popular you have become, how busy you have become, there is a time that is holy that is uh, uh, separated from all other activity, other time. Yeah, that is your time with your father. I, I, I call you this way, I've been uh, using this term here. Have, you, you must not neglect the son and father time or daughter and father time. Yes. We raise up children that way. Yeah. The old fashion of raising up children, a lot of talking down to them. You are not right in this, you are not right in this, you change, you change. If you don't change, you have no future. Yeah, that is partly right. Friend, them, talk with them, give them freedom. Give them freedom to do things different from your way. And then the world will change. Yeah, the world changes because our children, when they grow up, they don't do the things in our way. Our way was backward, their way could be new. Not always when young people do things differently, they are rebellious. Sometimes they are rebellious. The early part of the message, I'll say that very clearly. But there are times they receive wisdom from God. Like the previous generation have not seen it that way. Alright? The Bible says, do not build at places that we are not building, you are wasting your time. Build where God builds. Bless whom God has blessed. Amen. Intercessor, watch out. God is not doing the work of the past. He's always doing the work of the future. Amen. God is doing that a lot of your future things through your life. If you are soaking the spirit over your heart, then you know, ah, that is the next door. Oh, that next door actually have been there for 25 years. I said, I didn't want it. <laughs> uh, Okay, then point seven, Jesus spe specific, uh, specially took uh, three out of twelve, Peter, John and James, went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, there was a glory encounter. His appear the appearance of his face was altered, the rope became white and glistening, heaven opened, and then the, the, the disciples heard the, the voice of the Father uh, say that, listen only to the Son. And they became very drunk. Three of them were drunk, but Peter was the one when he was drunk, he was still able to communicate. Yeah, Jesus, oh, I built three tabernacles here. To keep the glory, I want this glory since, uh, oh, can I see uh, 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 Elijah, Moses, uh, and you, oh, glory, oh, I built three tabernacles to contain this presence of God. But Father God said, listen to my son. Now, of course, there is another way to look at it. The Father God is saying that, don't listen to the law. Moses and Elijah represent the law. But listen to my son. Listen to his grace, the grace teaching, the grace revelation. Yeah. The last point. Jesus wanted the 11 disciples to participate in his one hour last 
one hour warfare, praying in the garden of Gethsemane of the Mount Olives. Then he took only, the Bible says, he took only Peter, John, and James further into the garden. The 11, uh, why 11? Because one had committed suicide. Okay. So out of the 11, three of them, he said, come to the middle of this uh, garden of Gethsemane. Then he went further. Yeah, about a stone's throw. I don't know, throwing a stone is how, how far he from that door to that door further. So he he was praying alone. All right. Uh, then he prayed, Father, if this your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And the angel appeared, the Bible said, from heaven, strengthening him, because at that time, the warfare was so intense. I uh, taught you, you use your spiritual energy or anointing to fight against temptation, evil, sickness, and all kinds of attacks. Yes, if you feel tired, I want to tell you, start to remember you are not uh, always because physically it can be you are going through a warfare. Amen. For people who always get tired, I want to tell you because I'm speaking personally. A lot of the time, after I have uh, gone into some warfare over nation, over individuals, or ministering, and I just knew that my power has gone out of me. The power of God. And I need to wait on the Lord for the restrengthening. So an angel came at this time, strengthened Jesus. You have angels stationed with you, they are doing quite a few jobs. Number one, to protect you from all evil. Number two, they are delivering your prayer in glory speed, in golden bowl to heaven. And God pour it back on where you are, on the things you pray for. There are a list of things that the Bible says, do a Bible study, please. And then these angels also strengthen you. This angel releasing dunamis of God, the power of God into you. Yeah, there was a time Jesus prayed until he was in agony. Did he stop? He is the one who didn't yield to difficult, uh, keep into a difficult situation. Early on, now one of the the, the, the example, uh, one of the scripture I shared with you, and he prayed even more earnestly until what his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Yeah, so blood came out with his sweat. It was extreme agony. When the Bible somewhere else say, you know, we have not been tested until we shed blood. Uh, people will say that we are tested not until like Jesus you know, shed blood on the cross, correct? But I think uh, this level of shedding blood, you know, agony, blood came out of your sweat. Many of us are in agony, we have not come to that extent like what the Lord Jesus has suffered for us. Okay, so with these eight uh, references, I showed you the unceasing prayer of our Lord Jesus. Let's stand. I want to bless you. This is my happy. I recognize when the word of God is released, whether people like it or not, it doesn't matter. God will bless the word, and the word is going to change it. You will renew your mind. That's going to change it. Oh, shaka ba 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 ba. Rejoice always. Do something in the spirit until you rejoice. Live a life of talking to God on anything that you are doing or happening in your life. Thanks, we I'll share with you. You'll see God responding. You will see God's grace 
overflowing and you will be able to give thanks. I shared that before. The word give thanks in Greek means say grace. There are many Christians when they go through difficulty, they say bitterness. But the Bible says, say grace, give thanks. Shaka ba 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 ya. Yeah, 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 yeah. We bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus, I taught your word. Which has confronted me before many, many times. They have changed me. And I've spoken this word into the hearts of your people here and those who are watching online. Oh, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, take this word and speak to them again and again. Until Lord, they will not sub succumb under any persecution, any attack of the devil. They will rejoice always. They will come to deep communion with the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit will release the heavenly joy, the fruit of the Spirit. And they will pray by hearing you. They'll pray by yielding to your spirit. Walk in the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We bless your holy name, Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah rejoice in your healing. Those who need healing. By his stripes you are healed. If anyone here your right foot or maybe the the, uh, the toe part, the front part of your right foot is painful, receive healing now. Receive. Receive it in Jesus' name. And then Master, pain at the joint here of your right arm. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Or people have weak bladder, means you need to rush toilet very often. Or it could be just temporary, some people at certain age, over a short period of time, they have this symptom. You just receive the healing. Yeah. Don't let any symptoms stay until you become a terrible condition. Receive that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah, this word of knowledge is also for those who are watching online. We have people from other nations watching this online. Yeah, thank God for Facebook. Thank God for some of these gadgets. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah. Shaka ba 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 ba. Yeah. Yeah, the healing come. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now 
only the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.